fashion industry broadcast and Style Planet TV are proud to bring you their new Netflix original series, The Girl's Guides to the World of Designer Fashion. This new six-part series explores the seductive world of designer fashion. Series one, the history of lingerie. Series two, the legend of the designer bag. Series three, the mystery of the high heel. Series four, American fashion. Series five, Italian fashion, and series six, Paris fashion. Donna Karen, American Fashion. Seven easy pieces, feminist fashion, and urban zen. DK has lived it all. I'm here because, quite honestly, I can't find clothes to wear. If you know Donna Karen as DK, you'll know her for the legendary seven easy pieces. The bodysuit, skirt, tailored jacket, dress, something leather, white shirt, cashmere sweater. This was Donna's creation in 1985, where fashion was a means to convey the personality and sensuality of a woman. I dress people, I address people. And I couldn't just look there and look at somebody's body. And women, we were so uncomfortable about our bodies. So uncomfortable. I mean, I don't know anybody, even the size two's uncomfortable, yeah. feels they're too fat. I know. I mean, it's like, how do I cover this? How do I cover that? How do I cover this? How do I cover that? Well, I'm one of those people who have to cover everything. Today, Donna Karen is the founder of Urban Zen, a brand purely created to combine conscious consumerism and the design to balm the community's wellness and social impact. Urban Zen is a space and a place where um, people come together to create change in healthcare, education, and culture. Inspired by the Eastern cultures of the world, Urban Zen is a space for ease, wellness, and even some timeless clothing. The brand is meant to elevate your inner peace with ready-to-wear dresses, home decor, and even furniture. Based on Donna Karen's philosophy towards life, she worked on the brand with a genuine intention to raise the Urban Zen Foundation, which is a non-profit organization devoted to raising awareness and inspiring change in areas of healthcare, persevering culture, empowering the mind, body, and soul of children. The present for me is healthcare. Where is the care in healthcare? The future is education. Mind, body, and spirit holds the whole thing together. You know, it's, that tells me that UCLA is treating the whole patient, and I think that's what I've appreciated. The longer I'm here, the more I appreciate that. In a conversation with TNC, she discussed that I've always wanted a store where the product supported a foundation. But of course, Urban Zen is so much more than that. And the clothes, are they made here, Donna? The clothes are all, all, all made domestically right here, right. which is really exciting. Such strong principles do not come to one spontaneously. It takes years of experience to achieve this intricacy that paves the way for a global change. Donna Karen is an epic example of this. Donna's fashion career was highly recognized for her stance on dressing up women, not as Barbie dolls in tennis shorts and skin-tight clothing, revealing the breasts to satisfy the fantasy of men. Rather, her aim was to give women the option to choose fashion that was comfortable to wear, be it office or a party or going to a park or even a fancy restaurant. I had to create a system of dressing that can take me from day to evening. You know, I start with yoga, hello. Then I throw on a dress. I can go out, put on some jewelry. Donna's creations were of coveted fashion. She spoke up for the female point of view in clothing, 
And this may seem insignificant, but Donna's flair of designing outstanding clothes made her one of the first to champion a female president in 1992. The beauty of being a woman is our heart. We feel, we see, we have our instincts. We create We're the creative of people, children. Women do make the change. Women are the change makers. There is a change happening right now that's far bigger than fashion. American fashion in the 1990s was all about the iconic power trinity. It was Ralph, it was Calvin, and it was Donna. It was Donna who proposed making clothes for the first possibility of a female president. Donna's renowned advertising campaign at the time, Women We Trust, was groundbreaking. The social compliance while she designed the groundbreaking double-breasted blazer for model Rosemary McGrotho, who played the women in power in the campaign. It was meant to create a fantasy of having a female president, and it turned out to be a classic in fashion's history. Though this time was merely an ad campaign, it had a greater value for its time. Rosemary, who worked on the campaign, spoke to Donna about that with Vogue, and she said, she was all about power and women and that kind of thing. Everything is sort of conducive to it, of being presidential. The set is like that. You get it right away. And then the swearing in on the Bible, it definitely was. Donna was really on that presidential thing. I think she would have liked to have seen a woman be president. And I'm pretty sure she would still like to see that. Fashion came not as a new concept to Donna, but it didn't come to her with ease. With her mother a model and her stepfather a tailor, Donna was meant to be a part of the ruling world of fashion. She pursued her education from the Parsons School of Design after graduating high school. Post this, Donna began her career as an assistant to Anne Klein in 1967. Her initial days were less of designing and more of sharpening pencils and bringing coffee to the desk. And Anne was known to be diligent at her work and Donna could not match up to Anne's work efforts and late nights and ended up getting fired. And just when anyone would admit to defeat, Donna wanted to prove herself. And a few years later, Donna would officially begin her journey as the head of Anne Klein design team, where she stayed until 1974. The road ahead was full of hurdles and it took another decade for Donna to launch herself into the globe of fashion. American Donna Karen is a stylist too. Her territory is the modern woman. A woman who is as busy, successful and committed as she is. The iconic bodysuit by Donna was a result of a yoga practice since she was 18. Donna Karen, the American designer, uses underpinnings in the form of knitted bodysuits as the basis on which she builds up an entire wardrobe. And not to forget the famous cold shoulder dress, known for its eccentric aesthetic, changed the outlook of women back in the days. Donna's belief is that the only place she will never gain weight is in your shoulders. Besides immense success in the fields of fashion, Donna's life had been a series of tragic events. Starting off with her mentor, Anne Klein, who passed away the same time Donna was giving birth to her daughter with her first husband at the hospital. This loaded the responsibility on Donna's shoulder to, to head back into the studio and complete the collection. Quite a painful experience. Following this, her beloved husband, Stephen Weiss, and her started their New York fashion voyage. The popular DKNY came into the picture. I had no idea that Stephen was who Stephen was. Yeah, he was an artist. He was the hottest, ponytail, coolest artist I knew. I fell in love with an artist. I did not fall in love with a partner in business. That was the shock. I said, all I want is a little teeny business for me and my friends. He says, don't worry, I'll be by your side. We'll do it together. And Stephen was always by my side. If you don't want your daughter to steal from your closet, start a clothing brand. That's how Donna got the idea to officially launch DKNY. The perfect street wardrobe is full of fur-coated anoraks, classy jumpsuits, unconventional boyfriend jeans, and typical dresses. This brand is what we call fast fashion and kind of where you put minimal effort to look your best. 
Back in the day, in a conversation with Vogue, Donna spoke about the gene collection to embrace the genes lifestyle in all its expressions. More than just denim, genes are an attitude, a way of being. This line is very much that, only completely from a city point of view. Eventually, the longevity of DKNY concluded when the couple sold their brand to the French conglomerate LVMH. But she remained a chairperson and designer for this line. And soon her other half, Stephen, saw the end of light in 2001 and it left Donna in the dark, which she fears the most. Beyond just being the husband he was, Stephen was her business partner and a trusted advisor. I wanted to be an artist. Yeah. You know, but then I met my husband, I realized what real art was all about. <laughs> so I realized, you know, I'm the business but artist and he's yeah. the real artist. What's the difference? Well, he he said it very clearly. He said, listen, Donna, one of us out there is enough, two we couldn't deal with. <laughs> so as we sit in my husband's studio yeah. and you feel the energy. Oh, you do. I mean, really everything do. here he created. He created the building, he created yeah. the objects, he created the sculpture, yeah. the apple down on the river was his yeah. creation, but he never showed his artwork. A strong and influential woman as Donna was also the victim of bullying and verbal abuse. She mentioned in her memoir, The Journey, on her unraveling her deepest fears. She also mentioned how Stephen and her relationship had been an inspiration to create the empire she takes pride in. However, she invested in fashion and her relationship wholeheartedly that these comments meant little to her. In an interview with US Magazine, she recollected at a time growing up where she was wound up in a mental and emotional turmoil that pushed her to be scared and worried throughout. Until she met Stephen, whose optimism and charisma kept her going to make a mark of her own. I was drawn to him with every cell in my being, she wrote. Stephen was my husband and he was an artist, a sculptor, my partner in business, father of my children, drove me crazy. <laughs> Many designers come and go, but Donna Karens is a name that stuck. Donna was a visionary for women's apparel. She designed clothes for comfort and for self-awareness at the same time. She revolutionized the way women dressed and she gave them body conscious capes to adorn and acknowledge their own skin, regardless of its shape, size or tone. When Donna stepped down from her franchise, DKNY, there it was a wave of mixed emotions amongst her fans who admired her vigor in making clothes that empower women. Thanks to Donna's stretch fabrics that more often preached women to embrace their flaws, but Donna didn't give up on fashion and hence came the urban zen, giving hope and power to many women to accept their waistline, thighs and tummies without an iota of shame. And I saw this company called Urban Zen where you walked in, it was cotton, cashmere, candles, CD, cafe, community, yoga, just everything for the mind, body and spirit and a gallery. And in this gallery was exhibitions and conferences that would bring people together or connect the dots, as my husband would say, to make a difference in this world. Besides the fabric of Donnaisms that were exclusively meant for women to women's ethos and the never ending attempt to boast about women's sensual nature, she also dared to venture into displaying androgynous designs that included many gender fluid references. And hence, she stepped up into the capital of the men's collection. She went by the nickname the Queen of 7th Avenue back in 1989, and experimentation was a piece of cake for Donna. Under the umbrella of DKNY, she successfully launched the men's collection in 1992. Beyond just apparel, Donna's hub is a place for handbags, accessories, lingerie, eyewear, bedding, beauty products, and even fragrances that were designed by her late husband. So many people ask me, whatever happened to Fuel for Men? Whatever happened to Black Cashmere? Whatever happened to Chaos? This is really exciting, all those fragrances that we've all loved. Each one of them is symbolic to me for many, many reasons. Our signature fragrance was an experience that I had with my husband when we first started the fragrance business years and years ago. But to be able to put out Chaos again. In the wake of summer 2015, Donna finally wrapped up her contribution to DKNY and since then has channeled her attention solely on Urban Zen. Such a powerful personality advocating for women throughout her decades in fashion, 
did become bait to a major controversy. Donna Karen became the reason for a worldwide outrage back in 2017 when she defended her friend and film producer Harvey Weinstein, who co-founded The Weinstein Company, but I don't need to tell you anything about him. Back then, he was just accused of sexually harassing US actresses, actor Ashley Judd, and at least one other actress, models and multiple female employees during his time of working for the movie mogul. The demise of the image Donna Karen was due to her imbecile comments on this entire allegation. She went from being the ambassador of creating feminist clothes to completely flipping the character of a woman based on their clothing. Donna went on to claim in 2017 on the red carpet at Cine Fashion Film Awards in Los Angeles. Obviously, the treatment of women all over the world is something that ha has always had to be identified. Certainly in the country of Haiti where I work, uh, in Africa, in the developing world, um, it's been a hard time for women. She also added, But I also think, how do we display ourselves? How do we present ourselves as women? What are we asking? Are we asking for it? You know, by presenting all the sensuality and all the sexuality. The issue is not about expressing a stance. It was about her breaking the reputation one held for decades together. Her accusation on women that when they dress provocatively, they're seeking out trouble, broke the very foundation Donna was building with her entire fashion career, the female point of view. No wonder where she lost it in amidst all of this chaos. The internet lost all faith in Donna with her insensitive remarks of blaming the women card during a sexual assault. Twitter was filled with anger and many famous celebrities like Rose McGowan, who was an actress, activist and author, expressed their stance on Twitter. Donna Karen, you are deplorable. Aiding and abetting is a moral crime. You are scum in a fancy dress. Though Donna regretted it instantly, it was all to no vain. First, I want to say how sorry I am. You know, what I said is so wrong and not who I am. Hashtag boycott Donna Karen was trending on Twitter with many women who believed Donna's fashion lineage that was meant for the women empowerment banned her completely. All it takes is one mistake that reveals the principles you formed. Years of speaking up for women and it all blew up in one moment for Donna. When you become a public figure, there is a sense of responsibility that comes with it. If you are a face known to fight the societal norms that hinders the growth of women, you are an empowered figure, more than just a celebrity. You become the voice of those voiceless and your stance matters. Donna Karen is now 71 and continues to practice her love for fashion through her work in urban zen. Whether through controversy or adversity, Donna Karen remains a titan in the industry of fashion. Her legacy will continue. She will always be the designer that refused to design for size zero.